Welcome to the Delish Guestless Podcast, a deep dive into the lives and work of Hong Kong's crazy food and beverage industry leaders, hosted by The Beat Asia Magazine. This episode, we spoke with Josh and Caleb Ng, co-founders of Twins Kitchen, a booming boutique restaurant group in Hong Kong and China, as the brothers tell the tale of how they fell in love with creating food and drinking foreign wine, creating restaurant concepts unique to the city, and what they have in store for the future in Hong Kong. Enjoy! Hello listeners in Hong Kong, Asia and beyond. We are sitting down today with Caleb and Josh Ng of Twins Kitchen, a Hong Kong-based F&B consultancy and creative firm, supporting a wide range of restaurants and drinking dens in the city and the group behind Common Ground Cafe, which we are here right now, the Avant Restaurant, Interval Dining Chain, and Cafe Lights. Raised in Hong Kong and educated on the west coast of the USA, twin brothers Caleb and Josh run the business of Twins Kitchen, shaping one of the decade's most defining restaurant groups in Hong Kong. Guys, welcome. Hello. Thanks for having us. Born in Hong Kong, raised in California, what first piqued your interest in F&B? We always love food, like uh, it's kind of my family's um, love language. My, my dad is a uni professor and like a lot of like a traditional Chinese father, he's very um, kind of reserved, but he got a big passion on food. So I got so, several like very memorable memories of my dad taking me to good restaurants. And uh, I think we, yeah. The interest of food start from there. And in a really young age, I, I think like seven, Sunday usually my mom make breakfast. Sometimes she she had a little sleepy head, she sleep like overslept. And me and my brother, we are making scrambled eggs, like mixing all the, the, the pancake like uh, patterns for breakfast, which I think is a really good memory too. Mm-hmm. What brought you guys away from your childhood home of Hong Kong to, to the States to study? Uh, university. So uh, we went to UCLA in uh, Los Angeles. Really lovely weather like today. Uh, you got the most like uh, amazing ingredients in, in, in California. And I think this also like helped us to, to establish like the, the cooking and the passion of food. Was it about uh, creating the food, cooking the food or sampling the food in California that uh, brought on a bit more of that uh, intrigue. I think the we 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 um, we rent a place uh, next to the school, and then we got some friends uh, who um, share the apartment together. And then the cooking responsibility falls on us too. Starting from like um, freshman, we at four four p.m. five p.m. Some would just knock on my door and say, uh, when, when is the dinner? Like, uh, they would snap your fingers. Yes, it's <laughs> like, where's the dinner? Okay. And then we, uh, so basically we cook almost like Monday to Friday. So uh, wow. I think, uh, and uh, we really enjoy the, the gathering, like the time. And we also got a rule that we don't open any like um, television, any, uh, anything during the, um, the, the dinner time. So it's a very, like usually it's um, very um, interesting talk and some in depth conversation and I think um, we really missed this, so we started um, Twins Kitchen. Mm-hmm. What was the first job that you both had in the F and B industry that led you on to creating this restaurant group? Then actually, we didn't have a really a job before. Yeah, really? we 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 kind of like work in investment banking for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then we started our own important company. The wine importing company yeah. was something that you came back to Hong Kong uh, with to to begin. Tell yes. me about tell me about that. Yeah, the the evil plan is we want to spend half the time in uh, Cali and half the time in Hong Kong. It's very evil. Yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> we, we think of this. Oh, okay, well, let's do something that we can connect the both cities. <laughs> it didn't go that well. Like we end up just staying in Hong Kong. Uh, but um, yeah, that's the starting point of like why we start a wine company, and we see a, a, a missing piece in Hong Kong in the wine market of like um, good Cali wines, like small producers, and so we are trying to bring back those um, small producers to Hong Kong. Was it about importing the flavor of California to Hong Kong, or 
to see if you could enter more seriously the F&B space? I think that the first thought is like we just want to bring back the memories, mm. uh, the the smell, the touch of like wineries that went to Napa, went to Santa Barbara, back to Hong Kong, which I think is like California wine is such a direct, straightforward like like fast food wine. So it's like Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon, like Sauvignon Blanc. It's like so easy to understand, and we just miss that kind of taste. What do you think back then and now? Hong Kong missed in terms of its wine industry that you wanted to to supplement to help. You mean now, then and now? What hole were you filling? Was I think it more exciting? When, when I start wine, it's all only like uh, Bordeaux, Burgundy, really expensive wine. Mm. Uh, we just want to tell the story of the producers, mm. like two mm. fathers, like father and sons uh, duo doing five thousand bottles of wine. That kind of story back to Hong Kong. I think it's really aligned with what we're doing right now too. It's like tell the story like what was what's the meaning what's the concept behind talking about stories what was the story that you first told with twins kitchen when was twins kitchen an idea that was brought to reality the the idea started with like i got a friend from ucla he he um he majored in film and he came back and he was jobless for a bit and then we were talking about like the cooking show in hong kong is so boring it's like oh we got um 500, uh, 500 grams of like um, flour, like it's, it's like um, it's it's not lively. It's, it's uh, then we are uh, we're trying to do something that's more lively, more um, the vibe, like make people want to cook. Um, something more like Jamie Oliver, like um, mm. the yeah, you f- you feel the passion of uh, the food, and there's a story behind and the the meal, like that kind of stuff. And so we we started. Twins Kitchen, so it's like a, basically it's like a YouTube show, and <laughs> and someone refer us as the first YouTuber in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. We did like yeah, it's 2010. Yeah. Wow. So we started like a pretty decent like um, YouTube. Show, like, really? And we did it for five episodes and until my friend got a job <laughs> and we stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so it began as a YouTube channel, which I didn't prepare for. I didn't research yeah. this and maybe no one else knows. Mm. But what was the first physical form of Twins Kitchen beyond YouTube, beyond uh, just ones and zeros? Uh, definitely it's Common Ground. Common Ground. Yeah. Okay. Tell me the story of Common Ground. So I think 10 years ago, just, we are still missing like uh, artisanal coffee shops in, in Hong Kong. Uh, we we do think there's like a space and market for it, and and we found this space. This is a definitely an amazing space. I think uh, even like, some weekends I still want to come here, read the book, have a coffee, have a chat with friends. It's just like a oasis in Central or in Shanghai. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we actually we we renovate this space ourselves. Really? Uh, from painting the wall, uh, this shelf we make it ourselves. Wow! Uh, some chairs is like just second-hand chairs. Wow. Uh, I think we start the the cafe with like three hundred k, Hong Kong. Seriously? Yeah. So we make uh, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the starting point of like uh, common ground, or also like a, a physical space of a uh, twins kitchen. Mm. Your restaurant group has brands and identities behind each venue that can stand on itself. True, yeah. Um, uh, common ground is always about neighborhood. Like, exactly. Like a common ground. It's like, mm. this is the, like the commercial and residential. It's middle of like commercial and residential area. It's middle of uh, like peak, like up, upper like residential and, and like here, Shangwan, Central, old neighborhood, a lot of expat. This is like why we want to stay up like, a, it's like a community center. The problem is you don't know if you're in Shenwan, Soho, or mid levels. Yeah, yeah. Because Bridger Street is Soho, then you go over there. That's Shenwan. Up there is mid levels. So it's kind of like a bit of a mystery. Um, beyond Common Ground, what was the next phase into growing Twins Kitchen? Two hundred percent. I think we uh, we got a, a small pancake restaurant called Stack in mm. um, Saying Poon. Really? We did it for uh, two years and we sold it to a company afterwards. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's the second phase. Like, we are trying to do more like serious food, like more like a restaurant instead of a cafe. And, and we progress to Interval after. Tell me a bit about Interval. Uh, M Plus, Lai Chi Kok, and then Cyberport. 
interval is I think is um, we got this idea of in the middle like um, like I think everyone is like a rock star or something mm, you mm, need mm, this mm, mm, the break between the gig so uh, I want to create this space that no matter where you are maybe you're in central investment banker you'll have all these meetings but in between you can go to interval to have to relax and recharge you know interval for me and a, a lot of people in the FB industry is known for its incredible pizza it's amazing a la carte menu as well as a good selection of wines was that important to have not only the space but the great food behind it as well yeah i think like um the entry point on the end of any restaurant is the good food like the quality of the food like um, that makes people go back Mm. And, mm, 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 mm. and I think uh, we got a huge passion on, on coffee and we also got a huge passion on wine and of course food like uh, and I think pizza is a very good median for people to understand what we're trying to do your dining chain essentially if we, we can call it a dining chain has expanded into three locations is this one of your restaurants within the group that has uh, room for expansion can it be multiplied can it be copied in Hong Kong and beyond Yes, like uh, they, since day one, like Interval is a brand that we want to scale. And I think um, mm. it's instead of like Common Ground, Common Ground is so unique. Uh, I need to pick a location like this. I think it, this is quite tough. But for Interval, I think uh, there's more um, the identity, the, the interior, the food. It's more meant to scale. Just dropping by to say, if you've enjoyed this episode so far, check out the Beat.Asia for more exciting content just like this. The Beat Asia is the fastest growing regional publication for local news, happenings, culture, and more. So be sure to check us out at the Beat.Asia. Okay, let's get back to Josh and Caleb. Right now you're wearing the Cut Sando Bar, which obviously hit a lot of people very hard when it closed and uh, was... Sadly, but also happily replaced by Vivan. Yeah. This is a bit more of a revolutionary concept that you guys try to create, uh, pairing music with also this fusion food. Where did that begin in your adventure with Twin Sketch, and why did you want a Sando bar with DJs? I think Sando is such a like uh, member product in, in when you are in Japan. It's mm. so easy. Uh, it looks good. Very Instagrammable. <laughs> I'm a restauranter. I need to think about all, all this kind it's of stuff. It's Hong Kong. It's yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I just like always think the music part is missing in the restaurant. Like no one like kind of like, sometimes you went to a, a two-star restaurant or like a really fine restaurant, the music just sucks. Mm. It's, it's bad. It's like awful. And, and, and then why, why no one pay attention to this? Can we combine the music community to the food D community and also like the art community. So we are thinking one concept that can bring everyone together. And and definitely we have some really good sounds in, in, in Sando, Sando Bar. Absolutely. Yeah. Were you happy with the life that Sando Bar had? You know, it existed until you wanted to bring about something new with the van? I think the thing with Cut is um, it's a bit too ahead of its time. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's quite hard for people to understand like and, and the location is a very small location mm. and we're trying to do too much in one place um, but I think um, it's in the metaverse right now so uh, <laughs> I will bring it back one time <laughs> <laughs> obviously I think the F&B space investors restaurateurs chefs and people who like to eat are very happy at the introduction of the European bistro the van why did you want to bring yourselves away from a Japanese concept into more European uh, flavors? I think it's all about Justin. Like I hire a really good chef. Mm. He used to work in uh, Balan. Um, oh, wow. yes. went, went to went to Yinui in Tokyo, which is a sister restaurant of Noma. Mm. He used to uh, work for one year, came back, and he is always a friend. And we're thinking uh, one concept they want to to do together so it's like French bistro wow. let's do something like that and uh-huh. I think the space really did you pass by before I think the, the wooden door the wooden door the canopy like the, the French canopy just like you're yeah, in Paris and and I I think the space is it fit into like really like a little bit high end 
small, cozy concept. So that's why we started uh, Devon. And mm. Devon actually is also because we we sell a lot of like uh, low intervention natural wine. So uh, it's in alive. So this is how we get the name and also build the concept. Mm. Mm. And we are very inspired by the 11th district in Paris. Like all these like small bistro, um, very good cooking. A lot of those chefs are, have worked in like um, Michelin star restaurants, but they decided to do something more affordable. Um, also, the natural wine scene, like all, they're selling all these like very amazing natural wines in those restaurants, and I think this is like uh, something very inspiring. Right? So that's why we want to do it, do something similar in Hong Kong. Do you think the idea of escapism is important in the concepts that you have with your restaurant group in terms of you want an escape from the busyness you come to Common Ground, you want an escape from uh, traditional uh, Western and Asian food, you go to Vivan, uh, Interval Kitchen, you get an escape essentially from your work schedule. Is this a theme that you guys have considered? or? I think it's always always about the missing pieces in mm. Hong Kong. Like we, mm-hmm. we travel a lot, we... Um, we encountered some like very good concepts, and and when we came back, like um, we, we asked ourselves why it doesn't exist in Hong Kong. We're trying to bring back all these like uh, memories, all these like um, experience that we think work here. Of course, we would twist a bit. We need to adapt to the local market. So um, we create our own version of this experience. So do you think with your partnership with Cafe Lights, with the cafe in Causeway Bay, is that also tending towards a specific? Hong Kong market in the flavors of the coffee as well as the photography? I, I do think so. Like, uh, I think photography is such a big thing in 2000, and, like in this era. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, every, cause everyone is like a, a photographer. Now we, everyone has his own, own moment. Everyone is having a camera, like taking photos, posting on their own channels. And I think that part really fit into the coffee, like the leisure part. And, and which I don't think a lot of people touch base before. So uh, I really love that project. Um, working with uh, Laika is one of the dream too. Such a good brand. Absolutely. Uh, and now we want to create more about something about coffee and lifestyle and photography. I guess this brings us to towards the end of the conversation for the questions time. Uh, but we're going to go on to the uh, Buzz 5 questions. Now. Okay. Ooh. Seems, seems um, exciting. Caleb and Josh, we're going to ask you some quick questions, but less than a few seconds to think of an answer. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. You have 30 minutes to create a quick dinner. What are you making? Probably a steak or some dumplings with chairman's chili oil. If you had to drink only one bottle of wine for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Gamay every day. Really? Uh, Deep Water Bay or Repulse Bay Beach? Deep Water Bay. Why? That's a restaurant just next to Deep Water Bay. It's like a Thai restaurant. I always go show there. Okay. okay, that's acceptable. That's acceptable. If you had $10 million in your bank account right now and a landlord that would be willing to, to rent to you, what concept restaurant are you creating? A local seafood restaurant on a remote island. Ooh, remote island where? Like, I need to build like a pier. <laughs> you need to build the remote island yeah, yeah, first. And then the yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a free Friday night. What restaurants and bars are you hitting up? Probably I would start with Diplomat with a cocktail. Then maybe another drink in like a barn. Mm. I'll go back to Devon for some bites and wine. If okay. there's a seat. Oh, yeah, yeah. What about yourself? Uh, I just follow him. <laughs> <laughs> what is one food that you used to love as children and now can never eat again? I still eat everything. Really? Yeah. But is there one food that you could never eat as children but love now? Durian. Durian. Never had it. Is it good? It's good. Really? A quiet taste. Just frozen it. It's like ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) I will try that. Uh, What is your favorite thing to eat in Hong Kong? Beef noodles, like beef brisket noodles. Mm. Or Mm -hmm. Chinese barbecue. Mm. What is your favorite restaurant to eat at in Hong Kong then? Chairman. Chairman, Chairman, really. Favorite city to eat at? Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Maybe London. London. Where are you traveling to next? That's the secret. That's a secret. I'm going to Milan, oh. Alba for truffles, Burgundy. Oh, wow. When is that? Champagne. Uh, next week. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's we why I'm back you. in Hong Kong. We caught you at a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could travel to one restaurant in the world, where would it be and why? 
No ma. Okay. After did that for so long, and that new Calvert's new restaurant in Tokyo, Sasan. Mm, good choice. Uh, what has been the most proud moment of both of your F and B careers? I think it's like a New Year's Chinese New Year gathering with all the staff sitting on the table, mm. having fun, getting drunk every year. Yeah, I think this is like wow. my 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 proudest moment. It's like wow, 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 wow. feeding feeding everyone, uh, creating a good community culture in, mm. in the company. Does this happen with all the venues? Yeah, we close. Wow, we close one lovely. day. We just have fun. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, what is one thing that Hong Kong's food scene does well, and one thing that it needs improvement on? I think for the last ten years, the diversity has improved a lot. Um, you got like different style kind of cuisine, like um, the diversity, the 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 talented chef that that is coming to Hong Kong is amazing. Um, for the thing that need to improve, I think the the no show of the customer is. Getting very serious and mm. really a headache for us. Mm. What is one area that is most underrated for eating and drinking in the city? Saiyang Pun, I think. Okay. Some, wow. some sort of pole. Why do you uh, Why do you think Saiyang Pun? It's like a lost child in in, in the island. It's just past Shangwan, and uh, <laughs> no one doesn't really care about it. What are the good restaurants in Saiyang Pun? Brut is good. Yeah. Uh, there's some several like, local joints is nice. Mm. Uh, I love to go premium crew for wine. Really? Yeah. The local food is nice too. I've eaten at about 30 restaurants around Saipan. I've been there for a few months, like uh, close to a year, more than a year. Brut is good, but there's mm. tons of good Cantonese there. Yeah. And Italian. And it's um, cheap. It is cheap. Final question. What are you working on right now or in the future that you'd like to share with us? Josh. Uh, we are opening a new uh, restaurant in Shanghai. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So that's why I just came back from Shanghai for, mm. after two months, mm. setting up everything, building the team. Uh, wow. Would be exciting. It's like a, a new concept. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. Awesome. Do you guys have any other things to share? Follow our Instagram, twins underscore kitchen. Perfect. And then cafe lights, and then yes, we put all yeah, the other ones. Yeah. And you'll find everything. <laughs> it's a very serious picture of you guys like, like that. <laughs> Josh, Caleb, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. Keep your finger on the pulse and tap follow to keep up with Beat Asia to hear more colorful chats and rich stories. This episode is hosted by me, Ruben Verbes. Special thanks to our lovely guests, Caleb and Josh Ng for joining us today. Our producer for this episode is Marcus Trima and we are edited by Natsuki Arita. That's all for this episode. See you in the next one.